Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how I use this set in order for me to create these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel may be for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So once again, welcome to my small home studio. So for you guys who are new to the channel, this is basically a very small shooting area. This is only about 2 meters by 3.5 meters. And we have like a sort of pseudo set, but basically this is a ballet bar that my daughter uses whenever she's using this space to actually practice her ballet. But this time we're going to use it as part of my shoot because my wife is also or used to be a ballerina. So what do we have here? We basically have a plain black backdrop. It's basically just um, savage seamless paper that I cut to size so that it fits a small space. It's being held together using the Manfrotto auto pulse with just a background bar held by some super clamps there. Okay. Now that lens that uh, sorry the flash that I'll be using is my Sony F60RM as you can see here. This is my Sony F60RM and attached to it is the Magmod Mag Spear. Now one of the things that I, one of the reasons why I love this Sony flash system is you can see that I actually have it tilted in such a way so that my framing does not include the light stand but at the same time I will have part of the light as at the top right of the top left of the image to give a bit of flare. Okay, and it's held in place also using this one. This is the Magmod Mag Shoe. Okay, so here, let's put it back. Now, the light is basically one of the reasons why I like the Magmod Mag Sphere is because it actually spreads the light. It doesn't necessarily make the light softer, but it spreads the light. This is what makes the light softer. Because rule of thumb is that the bigger the light source, the softer the light. Now I have the mag sphere here so that it will actually spread some light going here, which will actually be stronger, therefore giving a nice highlight on my subject's face here. Then a lot of the light will actually be going here. The moment it gets here, it will bounce back and that will be the one that will give nice soft light on my subject's face. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go on to my camera. So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 50mm 1.4 lens. Now the reason why I'm using the 50mm is because I am shooting a half body portrait and I believe the 50mm is the perfect focal length for that given the space that I have. Now I also want to be shooting at 1.4 because I want to give that dreamy look as what you saw in the beginning of this video. Now. You may have noticed that I have something here attached to the, to the front of my lens, but I will explain that later after I go through everything. And the tripod that's holding my camera in place is this beautiful Peak Design carbon fiber tripod, which I actually use when I'm shooting outdoors. But I've also began, I also began loving it for the studio because it's so light, but it's so sturdy and it takes up as little space as possible. Now, my flash unit, my Sony F60RM, is actually controlled remotely using this one. This is a Sony WRC1M, this remote commander. Now the beautiful thing about the Sony remote commander is the moment that I put it on my camera, it actually allows me to control my flash wirelessly using the in-menu system of my Sony camera, which makes it very, very efficient and easy to use. Now everything that you're actually seeing is a live view recording of what my actual camera is seeing through the help of my Atomos Ninja V. Therefore, every single image that you will be seeing from here on end will be straight out of camera. Absolutely no editing was done unless stated otherwise. But more often than not, I actually put the edited images at the very end of the video, okay? So what is this thing that's actually connected here in front? This is a series of magnetic ND filters and mist filters 
from free well it's connected via magnets and i have here the mist base because that is the one that's going to give us a dreamy look from that flash over there now i have this one the nd filter for this particular reason let me turn off my flash first when i turn off my flash it automatically turns on live view therefore i can see the actual exposure of my camera right now at f1.4 1, 1, 1 over 250 iso 100 i can actually still see the bar now i can always go on high speed sync and maybe go at 1 over 1000 or 1 over 1250 but then that would suck a lot of power from my flash so i'd rather use an nd filter to cut the light coming from the video lights here in the studio okay and as i said earlier i really wanted to shoot at 1.4 so if i slap on this nd filter on top of the very uh, of the on top of the mist filter i can basically have like two or three stops right now maybe about three stops three stops of light of the three stops or maybe even four stops if i want to but three stops should be okay in order for me to be able to control my existing ambient light now again my white balance white balance is subjective normally this light is at set at 5600 kelvin but this one again i wanted it to be a more dreamy effect so i want it in the warmer tone so i set my white balance to 6800 kelvin sorry i couldn't see that but i normally would set it to 6300 to 6800 kelvin now you can also see here that basically my my focusing is set on continuous focusing because this sony cameras have a beautiful feature called iaf so no matter how my composition is or where my focusing point is the moment it detects an eye it automatically goes there so if i have it on continuous shooting mode Oh, sorry, continuous focusing, the moment I click my shutter halfway, it will automatically track my subject's eye. So with that out of the way, it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be our subject for today. Babe, come on in. Of course, you look fantastic, babe. You look very, very beautiful. And would like to thank our friend, Mela Jimenez, for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today. So the concept for today's shoot is basically Coco as a ballerina or... It's, uh, it's something that she's very passionate about. As you can see, we had still have this stuff here. And my daughter is actually following her mother's footsteps. So I wanted to dedicate this shoot to you being a ballerina in your past life. <laughs> All right. So let me turn on my flash unit now, my trigger, so that we can see what we are actually shooting. Okay. So let's take a test shot now. But first, of course, before we take the test shot, what's my flash power? My flash power is set now at 132 power. My high speed sync is turned off. Okay, let's take one test shot, babe. I just want to see everything. Good. Very nice. But I think we're a bit underexposed. So let me make my flash stronger. Maybe at about 1 eighth power. Very nice. Very nice. I love it. So you see the light that's actually coming from this from, from, from this modifier is actually hitting the side of her face while we have a lot of spill light here that's directed towards the front of her face giving that nice soft light. But I think I will twist this a little bit more so that we get more light going coming from that direction. And I'll just take another test shot. Oh, there. I love that. That's beautiful. Okay. Now, white balance wise, 6800 Kelvin might be a bit too much. So I will bring it back down to 6300 Kelvin. Very nice. All right. Can you take one tiny step to your left? Then lean forward. Put your arms over there. So internalize whatever it is that you're, that you're feeling right now. Okay. Okay, very nice there. Beautiful. Okay, so you guys might be wondering what this thing is doing, what effect it has. So let me take it out. And let me take out this, um, this mist filter. See, everything's connected via magnet. And since I took this one out, obviously my power will actually go down. And my exposure will be different. So let me turn off my flash first and bring up my shutter speed there at 1 over 2000 to remove all existing ambient light. And 
afterwards, let me turn on my high speed sync. As you can see, the moment I turned on my flash, it went back to one over 250. But the moment I turn on my high speed sync, it will go back to one over 1,600. So let's take another shot, babe. Same pose, please. So without the mist filter and the ND filter, that's how it looks like at the same power settings. And you can see it's totally underexposed because high speed sync takes out a lot of the power of the flash. So I might have to bring this up to about full power. Okay, babe, one more. And that's how it looks like, okay? So that's why I want this mist filter to be able to create a little bit more um, uh, dreamy effect to it. But as you can see, it's always better for me to just use an ND filter. In other words, I am actually making my flash stronger. There we go. So let's bring back my, my shutter speed to 1 over 250, which is the flash sync speed of my camera. Remove high speed sync and bring this back to 1 8th power. Now, one of the things, one of the reasons on why I actually want to do that and bring my power down is because remember, these flash units are battery powered. If I am shooting at full power all the time, I will drain the battery faster. It might be more inconsistent. It, the recycle time is also longer. So it's always best to just use an ND filter instead of having to go on high speed sync unless absolutely necessary. Okay? All right, babe, let's do a few more shots. Beautiful. Then maybe you could have your chin going here a bit. Sorry. Here, looking there, yeah, there. There, nice, very nice. Very nice. Lean forward a little bit, please, and extend your arm. Beautiful. And a hint of a smile. Beautiful. Smile with your mouth open a little bit. Okay, tilt your head a little bit more. Too much, bring it back, I love it. Beautiful, love it. Then maybe you could actually just do something. Yeah, you know, even go in, go in lower, yes, that. Yeah, actually I like that, yeah. There, that's beautiful. You know how I wish we had one of her daughters there in front of you now in her, in her ballet outfit, but let's do a few more of that. I like that pose, babe. Very nice, beautiful. So one of the key things here also that you guys have to remember is that my light is in the very top edge of the frame. It's slightly seen, but not really seen. And that is what's giving us that really nice flare towards her. And that's, um, you know, some of you guys might say that's the brightest part of the image and it's distracting. For me personally, it actually leads your eyes towards what I want you to see, which is of course my beautiful wife. Okay, I wanna shoot some more, babe. Can we have that, that same pose again, please? Maybe. Oh, you could do that. You could do that. But not too far on this part. Yes. All right. Okay. Very nice. All right, so again, we were able to do this just by using one light. So basically what I did, baby, looked fantastic in all the images, really it looked fantastic. So basically I just had my Sony F6C-RM here and I had the MagMod MagSphere to be able to spread the light. Now by spreading the light, I had this light here. Babe, do you want to do your pose again so I can explain? Mm -hmm. So from here, the light's coming from here and it's hitting this side of her face and it is stronger than the light that's actually bouncing off here. Plus it is actually harsher, therefore giving a nice definition here. It's like a kicker light here, a highlight. The light that's coming from here is bouncing back. And since it is using this um, foam board, which is about 30 by 40 inches, it actually became a very big light source, therefore giving nice, beautiful soft light on Coco. I had this light here at the very edge of my frame so that I would get a flare, and that flare is the one that's actually directing the eye towards my subject's beautiful face, right? <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. 
And if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, if you want to see more of my images and images that I've taken of Coco, feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.